Good morning, everyone. Uh, and I'm delighted that you're having me on this um, uh, meeting to share the overview of uh, the assessment we did for the WHO Afro region. Uh, the background of which was has been elaborately given by Nadia, and uh, I appreciate the collaboration with Nadia and the rest of the colleagues at HQ globally and also the WHF region. So my name is Fred Ratibi. I am based in Nairobi, I, uh, the emergency hub for Eastern Southern Africa. Um, part of the cholera incident, uh, IMST for Afro, uh, leading the laboratory pillar. So I, I, I confirm if you hear me well, and uh, am I yes, we getting the projection from, from there? Uh, you want us to share this list for you? Okay, I'll do it sure. just now. I'll do okay, thank you. Kindly confirm I'm audible enough. Thank you. The slides are on. All right, so uh, we can move to the next slide. Um, so as Nadia said, we wanted to quickly really look at the capacities available in the countries and uh, uh, we, sent out this, well, I, I like the way Nadia says it, the dirty sort of uh, Excel sheet assessment. Uh, unfortunately uh, for our region, we're still getting responses. So for, you can see in this assessment, we have uh, countries grouped as category one in terms of their responses. So these are countries that gave us near complete responses in category two countries uh, whose assessment uh, we did uh, by getting some information through direct calls, um, uh, through meetings. And so uh, it, the in, for the category two, I just will be presenting a summary of the findings. and. Most of the findings really overlap, so we could go to the next slide. So the, this slide presents a summary of the findings for the category one countries, the ones that sent near complete samples. And in, re, in the Excel sheet, we're trying to look at, in general, um, is there at least a laboratory um, that can do uh, 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 vibrio cholerae confirmation by culture, whether there's a reference laboratory and whether the um, um, uh, standard operating procedures in place, if the laboratory is able to do antimicrobial resistance, uh, admin sensitivity testing, as Nadia had already said. Uh, and uh, from the responses, it was clear that um, uh, the understanding of um, the testing strategy is something that's variant. So on a whole, we, we can see um, uh, Botswana uh, would uh, uh, say they, they do any suspicious tools, sample showing characteristic rice water, uh, probably to be taking me so much time to go through the detail of all of this, uh, but I will be projecting the next slide, um, uh, the uh, assessment. Yeah, so overall, we are able to see that in terms of whether there is some um, standard operating, uh, I mean, strategy, and whether there's a minimum lab a laboratory that can be able to a uh, test for cholera uh, across the continent would say, and, and most of the countries scoring 100%. Uh, this, this 75 for uh, Zimbabwe 
I think we'll need to uh, have a conversation with the uh, colleagues that did the, the analysis, but uh, at least uh, the impression is that uh, in these countries, there's at least a laboratory that is able to do culture and sensitivity, let alone the fact that um, uh, some of the countries said they, they have the capacity, but they lacked uh, reagents. And the second did a pre-analytical assessment in which we were looking at uh, whether there are standard operating procedures in place uh, for sample collection, for sample transportation, um, and then how long it will take to move samples from the point of sample collection to uh, the laboratories, which is really a critical part of if, if we're talking about the turnaround time, there should be a standard uh, that we, we make reference to. And during the analytical phase, do the personnel have the capacity to do culture and sensitivity? Do the personnel have the capacity to do uh, the, the different runs, uh, 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 serial tests and so on? And uh, are, are they trained um, uh, and uh, uh, do, do, they, uh, do they have the equipment? Do they have the resources? And then the post-analytical phase where we're looking at once the data has been generated, is this data shared uh, uh, promptly? And uh, what system do they use to share the data promptly? And clearly, uh, from based on the responses that we got, we, we see that... Uh, there are challenges in uh, uh, the pre, uh, the, uh, the pre analytical phase, ranging from uh, some of which I'll, I'll, I'll present in the next slide, ranging from uh, sample shipment challenges uh, because, and then the gaps uh, that are highlighted here. And, and, and if, if we can go to the previous slide, we can clearly see of all of these phases, the post-analytical phase is the least, uh, is the worst performing. So when we do, uh, uh, when, when the labs do the analysis, it's, uh, it, it doesn't help if the results are not shared promptly for decision-making. So really the issue of data sharing the issue of analyzing the data is very, very critical. And I think uh, when we go in setting the standards, we this is one area we need to uh, have um, a focus on. Let's go to the next slide then. So the summary of the gaps in terms of training needs, uh, a number of the countries highlighted the need to have uh, training on sample handling uh, processing of stool samples, the others the sample collection. Uh, there were also issues highlighted with uh, uh, certification for uh, sample tra transportation, so capacity building. There are others highlighted the need for training on culture and sensitivity testing, and others indicated that uh, if we were to talk about molecular testing, PCR and sequencing, there needs to be uh, capacity building. And in terms of uh, supplies issues to do with stool containers, transport media, culture media, antisera, and uh, other ancillary supplies, uh, petri dishes and whatnot. And really the justification of all of this is to have uh, the right capacity of personnel to be able to quickly uh, detect uh, 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 cholera to support surveillance and decision making. We'll go to the next slide. For the category two countries, I also did a summary. We did a summary of uh, what capacities they have, what opportunities they have. Some of the countries have been able to. Uh, they they have the technical capacity to do uh, 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 detection uh, testing um, uh, and confirming. Uh, and of course, in the course of uh, uh, the outbreak response, we shared with the countries job aids that they could adapt 
uh, in their context to guide sample collection, packaging, and transportation. And so this was seen as an opportunity. They, some of the countries were able to do training on cholera uh, sample handling and rapid testing. Um, uh, th some of the countries have uh, uh, transport media repositioned their, their hotspots. And they, as I said earlier, almost all of the countries, in almost all of the countries, there's one laboratory that's able, able to do culture and sensitivity. And uh, some labs, uh, some countries have uh, decentralized the uh, uh, capacity for culture and sensitivity across the country, only that reagents are a limitation. And uh, some countries prepositioned uh, uh, rapid diagnostic kits. And in some cases, some laboratories uh, were validated for case confirmation. Uh, some were doing enrichment uh, 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 for cholera, others doing neurological tests, this, this serology, some have trained their staff on safety, uh, basic biosafety and uh, infection prevention control measures. And some of them have functional lab information management systems and others have molecular capacities and uh, countries like Algeria indicated that they uh, could potentially use their uh, uh, genomic sequencing capacity to do sequencing. Uh, in terms of the gaps, uh, the countries also highlighted weak sample referral systems, especially from uh, a very uh, rural places, remote places, uh, frequent stock out of uh, 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 supplies and reagents uh, for trans transport media and antibiogram. Uh, rapid diagnostic kit shortages, long lead times if they ordered reagents, limited uh, EQA samples for, uh, for activities to be run in the country. And then there's the lack of um, uh, supplies for differential uh, diagnosis of other enteric or diarrheal diseases, things like um, City smack and uh, some countries highlighted that they there was a lack of technical capacities, especially at the subnational levels, um, and also lack of uh, capacity for genomic surveillance, training gaps in sample collection, and uh, some of them indicated that they've had they have been using generic uh, standard operating procedures. Uh, which need to be updated, and uh, oxidase uh, test missing, and lack of media for storing um, kits for further studies and for EQA. Um, and frequently, the certificates of their sample shippers expire and are not renewed, and challenges with PCA, uh, I mean PCR test kits. We can go to the next slide and looking at uh, what um, uh, some of the experiences uh, that have been shared from the field. So this picture is shared from South Sudan. Let's go to the, the previous slide. Previous slide, please. So we, uh, in this picture, we just wanted to demonstrate some of the field challenges the colleagues indicated uh, where the tubes that come with the, uh, the, the deep stick, crystal V deep stick accurate, um, uh, if, if you packaged up, uh, up to five samples, two samples from the rural, this is, from a rural part of South Sudan in Malacca. And initially they had to ship samples to the National Reference Laboratory for shipping. So if they were to use this triple packaging, uh, 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 they, they, then the, the samples will not close. And then, uh, and then they could only package up to three uh, tubes, slant them and 
be able to send. So this was these were some of the challenges that uh, I think which relate to the conversations we're having uh, yesterday uh, that uh, we need to ensure uh, the supplies that are sent to the field have uh, they meet or suit the the purpose. And of course, they highlighted uh, short self life uh, self life of uh, shelf life of the of the test kits. So we can now look at what at Afro we are thinking as the next steps, uh, which I think would be important to consider. Ne next slide, please. Which I think would be important to uh, consider in coming up with the standards. Um, I think. Beyond the standards, we are looking at ensuring. Uh, can you come back to the last slide? Sorry. So we 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 really think that we need to ensure uh, countries. Uh, sorry, colleagues. Uh, I, we need to ensure countries understand the strategy and that the, there is a guidance in place for differential tests. Uh, this is very important because uh, many times, if the countries do not understand the testing strategy and do not understand how to correctly test the samples and uh, give false positives, then resources are committed to a, a, a sort of a false response and a bolar, uh, sorry, a cholera response which is actually not cholera. And it's also important to have an understanding of potentially using other differential tests to identify some other uh, pathogens because in, uh, in, in service provision, the public would expect us to uh, provide uh, guidance and which is why as uh, the lab uh, people, we, we stand there to provide the evidence. Can we just reflect a little bit on the last slide? I'll be ending my presentation soon. Uh, so we will need to support countries to revise their testing strategies. And so the discussions of this meeting uh, and the work of uh, Pascal together with uh, the others will be very crucial. We also uh, uh, hoped, uh, plan to have uh, training uh, where there are gaps in sample collection, uh, proper sam sample handling, shipment, uh, tr and transportation and testing. We want to ensure the job aids are there up to the last health facility so that there's harmonized understanding of uh, what has to be done. We would like to ensure the subnational uh, capacities uh, for culture uh, uh, are strengthened. We want to ensure there is an efficient sample transport network. Uh, Uganda, uh, 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 as an example, and Malawi, among other countries, have demonstrated how the hub and spoke model work. Uh, very well, I think we we are looking to leverage on those experiences to strengthen capacities in the other countries, and we really hope that the supply chain uh, issues uh, improve and get resolved. And with the logistics hub in Nairobi, we hope that we can stockpile some uh, reagents for if there's got to be reactive supply distribution in case there's an outbreak in a country. We hope we can mobilize more resources for RDT's culture. And if we have to move PCR uh, direction, and why not? And then we want to leverage the existing capacities in the countries. The, the, the virology laboratories have an immense potential in uh, uh, molecular uh, diagnostics. And if we uh, if countries want to adopt molecular capacities for cholera testing, then we want to leverage uh, the technical competences in the countries to support this capacity building within their countries, really integrating 
uh, uh, capacity building within the countries. And of course, improving uh, data collection, analysis, and data sharing for decision making. Um, and really, uh, one of our strong advocacies is to ensure we can have supplies within the region, one of the regions that experiences a lot of cholera outbreaks. I want to thank my colleagues uh, uh, who have contributed to this presentation. I also want to thank Felix who helped in uh, analyzing the data. Thank you and back to you colleagues. Thank you very much, Fred. Uh, we really appreciate the sharing of all this information.